Hi everybody, welcome back to MD Fly Fishing. Well I managed to get out for a couple of hours on Friday. Went out to my local water of Ryburn, the home of Rippenden Fly Fishers. Not a lot of people know about this water, so only got 38 members. But after this month's issue of Trout and Salmon, one of their writers came out and was that impressed. He wrote a seven page article, pictures, information, everything. So that's um, quite a recognition that. And he also got fish and chips as well whilst he were out here. But anyway, water level's still high. So fishing is limited to a, a few places. Cool. One of them later on in the video is one where the club members cut it all back. And uh, that's where I got a good yeah, fish up there. I was thinking to myself, what yeah. am I going to fish here? Bibios are usually quite good. But I make a pulling buzzer. That's got red and black in it and silver with a tail. All the colours of a bibio. So I put it onto an intermediate line, 14 foot leader, single fly. And this is how I got on. I had a few takes in this area, so uh, my hopes were high. As I say, the water level's still high, and what I brought with me was another GoPro, which I adapted onto a spike stick. What I was going to do is stick it under the water and see what activity was there. But as you can see, the water was really cloudy and horrible. Might have to wait a few more months for the water to clear up, but I did actually wonder how well this pulling buzzer was going to stand out. I wasn't having much luck here. Again, I was only here about 20 minutes. I was limited to time, so I thought, let's move up to the far side of the reservoir where the members have cleared a lot of the foliage at the back and I can actually get into the water. So I moved further up the reservoir. Well, this area isn't so deep. You've got roughly about a rod length from the bank to a point where you'll get up to your waist. But it is quite easy to wade out. But again, you've got to be careful. There are sunken branches and it is quite soft as you get further out. But it's a really good wide open space to get your line out into the deep runs. You go left or right in front of the bushes because in the summer I fish in front of the bushes when the water level's slightly down and I get some cracking fish. It was at this point my legs be <laughs> my legs started to get wet so I knew I had a problem. I thought no, the waders are not as good as I thought or the water might have just lapped over the top of the waders and started going in my pants but I thought not having much luck let's move behind me. It's a big clump of trees and a few people had fish out of there so I thought I'll move up there give it a go. So I've got myself in a position. Ideally here, it's best to dress back as far up this grassy knoll as you can. There's a wire fence behind there and the field behind that is even steeper. If you're in the water, I did it on a few occasions, you catch a leader on the wire fence. And I lost one or two flies as well, but I still had some pulling buzzers and that's what I was sticking with. I fish bibios, caught on bibios. If you've got a good enough line, you will still get the distance. And again, all this area to my front has been cleared by members. Before, it was all bushes and all kinds of undergrowth. We are limited to spaces here, especially at high water. But I felt confident. I'd had a few takes with the pulling buzzer down by the bench. And with this being shallow and quite weedy, the fish are bound to come in looking for all kinds of invertebrates and food. So it's only a matter of time before I got a fish. And that time was now. Come here. I've got a long rod and a short net. So that was me off the mark, pulling buzzer, worked very well indeed. Gave a thumbs up to Peter, who was down by the bench. Fished it for a little longer, nothing else doing. The thing is, move around. So I decided to go down over the bridge and fish an area I've caught fish before. It's wadeable as well, and off I went. 
Just make sure if you come out here in winter or when it's been heavily raining, the tracks are treacherous. Mud, mud, mud. Don't come out in your trainers or your best shoes. But anyway, let's see how we get on. Quite a lot of people would have seen this view before, one of my favourites. I can cast 20, 30 foot down this hedgerow, 2 foot off, 3 foot off, 4 foot off. Been very productive for fish. In this case, same setup, same fly, 12 inch strips. What a take. Didn't have tear into it. By the time I struck into it, this is what happened. Well this pulling buzzer they do like and take into consideration the murkiness of the water it amazes me how they see it but not being put off get it back out there now the reason why the fish aren't taking the hook is it because I'm fishing it too slowly so what I decided to do now get it out as far as I can bring it back roly polar varying the speeds let's see what happens So again, another fish to the net, more than happy. Chris, our secretary, had been out midweek. I think it was on the Thursday when we had a little bit of warmth in the air. He went out probably in late afternoon. He had four fish in about two hours. Uh, they were showing. I didn't see actually any fish show at all today, but it was overcast, quite cold, so I think the change in temperature might have actually just uh, put them down a little bit. But anyway, let's get this unhooked and released. So, happy with that, I think it's time for a move. I'm going to go down to where the Pixies doors are. I've had a few fish out of there before. The bank is quite steep actually, it's about two foot drop before you get to the water level. Then it's probably another two foot, sometimes three foot, straight down, right next to the banking. This is a really good area when the water level drops. When it drops about five, six foot, lots of banking, all open, loads of areas to fish. But The reason why they call this the Pixies Doors, just to the right of the picture, base of a tree. The grass has grown a bit now, but people go around and paint doors and windows on the bottom of the trees all along the path. And it must be some local game where children in the summer when they're out walking with the parents gives them something to look out for. Had an enjoyable day, wasn't as warm as I expected it to be. I was hoping to see a lot more fish rising, do a little bit of targeting. These are my first brown trout from Ryburn, the home of Ripperdon Fly Fishers for 2024. Hopefully the rain will subside, warmer weather will come, the water level will drop, allowing us to fish more areas. If you do want to come and fish here, just go on the internet, type in Ripperdon Fly Fishers. You can buy tickets online, I think they're about 20 quid for a day. But if you wish, you can buy a season ticket for 115 quid off the website and you can come and fish here 365 days a year, which works out as pennies. Take into account in winter, you've only got a few places to fish. But besides the areas I've covered already, you've got the boathouse area and there's one or two areas on the other side of the banking. We've got a car park as well. Quite pleased that trout and salmon did an article on us. I think it's worth a 20 quid ticket. But anyway, that's all from me. So thanks very much for watching everybody and I'll catch you soon.